Conference, your source for JVM knowledge. Okay, I think we can start, right? Oh, how many people like love stories? Oh, not so much. But let's hope you, you like this story. OK, the, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, the best love story in the whole technology uh, ecosystem. Maybe not better than the Steve Jobs, the Steve Wozniak love story, but kind of. Just to start, we are going to move to Los Angeles, uh, at that city that never sleeps. And we are going there to find Jacqueline Stone. Jacqueline Stone, she came from a very high uh, lineage where um, she studied from the best solid universities. And she learned a lot from the brother of her mother that, she, that he is called Bob. And she always called, her, called him Uncle Bob, right? And he's, she, okay, sorry. And she is engaged with Mr. Ford, Mr. Havison Ford. You know, this is not a very love story because they didn't love each other. They just wanted to, to marry, just to merge the, um, the two families and create a new family that is, go is going to be the reference for every object-oriented programmer. Now we are presenting, so I'm going to present myself too. I'm Nicolás Patarino. I'm from Argentina, the, the country that says Maradona, Messi, and Tango. Um, yes. First of all, I'm going to apologize because this is my first English talk. So if you don't, uh, don't understand anything, just ask me. Or if you are very shy to, to ask me, just cough three times. And I'm going to do what every non-speaker, non-native speaker says is repeat the same, but slower, you know? Um, OK, I'm working on 20. If you want to, to work in a very nice place, go to, to 20 to work with us. OK, let's move again to the clean architecture. How many of you know clean architecture? OK, nice, it's perfect. Because I'm not going to be very deep with uh, explanation about clean architecture. Maybe this is the most typical way to explain clean architecture, right? It's circles inside of circles. For me, the most important thing is the arrow direction that is, uh, that is point inwards, because the inner circles shouldn't know anything about the outer cycles, OK? But this is the only thing that I'm going to tell you right now. Um, why we use clean architecture? Because it makes us uh, be independent of the frameworks and libraries, independent of the database, independent of the UI, um, domain center. And for me, the most important thing that it makes the architecture, uh, the application testable, right? OK. Let's back to, uh, to Clean Architecture family. And uh, she's Jacqueline Stone. She was uh, walking on the street. And suddenly she says, oh, maybe it's him. Who could be? He, know, he heard that there is some, some guy here in the city. And yes, it was him. It was Ryan Cotton, right? And he was working, and she came, uh, she got close to him and started to watch what he was doing. And he was working with lists. And she said, oh, mama, what a beauty. So what elegant, how elegant it is. So it's, she started to think about Javison 4 and say, OK, how do you do the same in Javison, with Javison 4? And this is the normal thing that you do, no? right? Is create a temporary variable, a for loop, and just get the elements and put it in the um, Add it to the, a new list, right? But with Ryan Kotlin, it was me, uh, pretty, pretty easy. And she started to be in love with him. You know, it's like a butterfly in the, in the stomach. And he continued and said, OK, I can also add more uh, things to, to this function, just adding a few, a few lines. And she was, wow, this never happened with Harrison Ford. And she came back to, the home, to her home and was having so asking her where you have been, with whom, what did you do? And she started, they started to argue, and she ran out crying, 
and go with uh, Ryan Cotton and tell, and tell him, okay, we are having four, I have a lot of problems because I have to do a lot of work with him. For example, if I want to create a class, a data class, I need to create all the variables and the constructor, and I'm not putting it here, but also they have to create the setters and getters. But if you are working with, uh, no, and also if you want to compare uh, that data class, you need to override the equals method, the hash code method, and if you want to print it, you have to write the two string method. And this is a lot, a lot of work. And Ryan Kotlin was very snooty, and he said, okay, you say data class, right? Yes, I say data class, say, she says. Ah, so in Kotlin, we only need to add the word data bit, uh, before the class. So that's enough. And say, oh, mama, word ability again. Also, I have a, some problems with, with, with mutability. She says, for example, in this case, we have a movie manager, we have a new movie, and we are setting the year, 20, 2019. So after that, we, ha we, ha we are calling do something method with the movie, and we are going to print the year. So how many of you think that it's going to print 2019? No one knows. Why? Because this is a setter. This is a setter. And oh, it's too big, I think. OK, this is a setter. And inside the do, do, uh, do something method, we can change again the, the setter. And we are never sure, we cannot be sure that always is 2019, right? What we can do, we have it, have it some four. OK, we can remove the setter method and we can create a with year new method that is not going to change that value, that property of the, of the movie, but it's going to create a new class, a new instance of movie. Um, and with that, we can be absolutely sure that do something cannot change the, the year. So when we are going to print the git year, it's going to return 2019. Nice. But how Kotlin does it? Just change it bar to bar. That makes that the properties are not mutable, are immutable. And they were absolutely loved. Mm, Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline and Javison Ford, they have broken, and she, they started a new life with Ryan Kotlin. But Jacqueline has a, a lot of problems with Javison. They also have a layer problems, for example, for example, when you have in clean architecture uh, different layers, you need to transform the objects between that layers, right? This, is, this could be a very simple mapper that takes one movie entity and transform it, transform it to, to movie. Okay. How we can use it? In this case, we have something like a repository that uses two data sources, one local data source and another network data source. Uh, okay, take the, the movie from the local data source. If the movie uh, isn't null, it mapper and return it. If it's, a, if it's null, uh, it get the movie from the network data source. And again, if different of null, return it, the mapping transformation. I think it's, it's something normal, that's something that we could use it. But to, before to explain how do how we could do it in Kotlin, we are going to talk about extension functions. How many of you know knows extension functions? OK, maybe most of you. So extension function is going to be very fast. It's just adding um, a function to a class, right? In this case, we have a method, upper class first letter, that receives an, an string and make the, the OK, uppercase, right? So if we want to create an a, um, extension function, we are going to add it, the string, before to the method. With that, we are just saying that we are going to add that method to the class. OK, in this, ca this case, we can use it maradona.uppercase first letter, right? But this is something that mm, is not very common to, to know, but it also helps us not only to, create, to add a, a method, it also could change the order on the invocations.
For example, if we use it in the normal way, we are going to say, okay, upper class, upper case, first letter, Maradona. But if we use extension function, you, we can say Maradona dot uppercase first letter. And in later, we are going to see that it could be helpful for us, okay? So uh, what we have done there, we can make a movie entity to domain. This is an extension function that create, oh, that create uh, a method to map, to transform the movie entity into the movie, right? In this case, if we try to replicate what we have done before in the repository, it, it, it looks a little bit easier, right? It's local data source dot get movie dot recover. If recover is another extension function that I created that is going to be called only when there is null in get movie by ID, it tries to get it from the network source and after that map the transform the the entity to domain, okay? I think it's, it could be a little bit easier. Okay, it improves us the readability. We have before that, and I think it's a little bit better in that way. And I don't know if you know it, but here we can put it, we put it operator. Operator is a, is a reserved word, keyword, to change, okay, here, to change the get. Here in Kotlin, there are some methods that could be overload the operator. So if you, if you overload the operator get with the method for get, you can access to, the, to that method with dot get, as always we do, or we can access like a, an array way, you know? But this is not the only, the only method that we can over, uh, overload. We can also overload plus, minus, times, get, set, invoke, and so on, right? It could be helpful, some, helpful so, sometimes, right? Now they very, very, they were very, very in love. They were, they meant to be all their life together. And he said, okay, also you can do that kind of things, you know? Or maybe better, we can make an interrupt with Java and we can do something like this. And she says, oh, fuck. This is exactly the same that I have it with JVSON 4. So I wanted to, to change, I wanted to improve myself, my life, but I'm getting exactly the same, right? And JVSON 4 says, build time increases with Kotlin. So she was completely fucked. So she was out of love with Ryan Kotlin. But Ryan Kotlin, it's a kind functional. So we have to understand him. I think he is ahead of his time. He is better than he. Everything that he does is for a greater good for all. So we need to understand first why sometimes he is a little bit functional. And to understand why he is a little bit functional, we are going to talk about functional programming. Just a little bit, and just is not, not something very, very specific. But for example, we are going to make everything by example, right? So we have um, one, one work to do, and it's calculate the total cost of a list of tasks. We have a list of tasks. Any task has a time that has to be done, and any time that has a price, and we can calculate that, right? The, the total cost. So what we have to do? First, we need to get list, a task entity list. We have to transform it to a task list, we need to get time for each task, we calculate the cost for each time, and sum all the costs, right? It's not something complicated. So we are going to just put it in a, a functional way. Uh, first in, in Java, this is something that we can do. I think it's not so, so bad. It could be improved, but I don't think it's very, very, very bad. First, we create a, a, some temporary variable, we create a for loop just for all the list of tax entities. We take the, the first one, the one, and to map it to the, to the main, get the time spent, calculate the price, and sum it to the temporary variable, right? When we get out from the for, we, have, we are going to have all the sum cost, right? This is how we do it in Java. If we wanted to make the sum the translation in functional programming, we, can, uh, we need to know what reduce is, reduce is a method that you can receive a list of something, a function, and it returns a value. 
for example, it could be helpful for us now when we have a list of int no, or, or euros that is going to have the, all the costs, and it returns only one. The function in this case is going to zoom, no, right? The, the, it, uh, it will take every item, I'm going to zoom, uh, zoom with the next one, right? Also, we have the map method that it takes a list and not a function, and it's going to return the same list with the function applied for every item. For example, it's going to transform some, some data. And the sum method, that is something that I, I told you before, that it takes two int, for example, and return an int, or two euros and return an euros, is something uh, simple. So if we, plan, uh, if we put it in a, in a functional way, we can have something like this, right? And she say, okay, you are not getting better. I say, really, you are not getting any better. And he say, okay, let's start just for uh, step by step, right? So first, we are going to uh, start from the deeper part and we take a map. We have a list and we have, we have a function. But maybe this is not so readable, so we are going to rename it, right? Instead of call it map, with a function to domain, we can create a function that is called list to domain, right? I think it's a little bit better. And we can do the, exactly the same with the next step. The next step, okay, we can put it in one line because it's better, always, right? If you have, if you have the possibility to put in one line, why not put it everything in one line? No, that's not true. Uh, okay, so the next step, uh, we have a map and we have a step uh, spend time method. So also we can rename it to create it at one method. This spend time. And we are going to put it in some lane? Yeah. I know, we, can, we, we didn't put it. Okay, but now we have a map with a spend time in euros. We, also, we can also put it in one, in one method. And the reduce with the sum, we can do exactly the same. We can create a method called sum all. And mm, this returning, this is the, the final calling chain, I think it could be easier to, to understand the first, than the first part. If we put it in one line, okay, maybe we can follow it. Maybe it's not so readable, but we can follow it. But if we remember when we were talking about extension functions, I also told that it's not only to create a to add a function to, to one class, it also could change the order of invocation, right? So what we are going to do is create a extension function for each function. For example, in the first, in the first uh, option, we have task entity list. So we are, we are going to create a list to domain method. That is going to return list task, okay? And we are going to make the same for the second step that we have a, task, a list of tasks, and we are going to map it to list spend time without extension function. And we do the same for list time in euros and sum all. What we do, what we obtain, what we gain with, with it, with this, is that we can call in a more semantic way, right? It's like task entity dot list to domain dot list, sp uh, list spend time dot list time in euros dot sum all. So this, this process is something that maybe we, we are used to, to to, to, we used to, but maybe we don't know where it come from. I think if we just remember that it came from functional programming, maybe it's better to not be so afraid with that. Okay. The full cost method that we have uh, in Java, it could go, ah, okay, this, this is what we have in, in Java, and it, I think it's better this way. I think it's more readable. Sometimes we think that this is more readable, but to me it's not we are, that we are more, uh, it's more readable, but is that we are more familiar with that. Sometimes we mistake that. Okay, now she is getting a little bit better with, with Ryan Gottlieb. They started to be in love again. So how, do you, how did you error handling with, with Habison 4? For example, we can create an interface repository with a method getMovie, okay? Uh, here we have a use case that with, a method, with a run method, 
that is going to try catch the repository get moving because we don't know if that uh, method in the repository could throw or not uh, an exception, right? We are just capturing the exception as exception, so it's not so it's not so good. But we can improve it, right? We can take uh, we can make explicit the exception that it could throw, and we can catch it uh, independently, okay? But also we can go further, and we can go further, and we can create our own exceptions. So if we can create our, our, uh, our own exception, network exception, and not movie exception, okay, it's, it's getting better because I know um, in a more specific way what we are having, what, what is happening, there, right? So we are going to see how we can do the same in Kotlin. But first, uh, exceptions, to me, is not very the best way to work with, with errors, to handle errors, because they are very expensive. They are very expensive because when we are uh, throwing an exception, it takes and it has to, to go through all the stack trace and copy the stack trace for that new, uh, that new exception. There is a one way that you can uh, skip it if you, I think, it, uh, when you create an exception, you can pass it three parameters and the last two are uh, booleans that you can play with, with him to avoid to copy all the stack trace. But when it throws, you are not be able to see where it was, right? Also, to me, it's bad modeling because if we have the exception that I think most of us uh, will have um, not eaten exception, we are telling that this is an exception that we cannot have um, an item. But to me, this is something that will happen. If I have a repository and I get, they say, OK, give me the two element, maybe there is no element. And it's normal that, that happens. So to me, it's a bad modeling. Because it will be exceptional, as exception says. And also, it could let the system inconsistent. Because, uh, why? For example, if you have a list, um, you are list of user, and you are just writing down in the database, in the position uh, 10, it makes an exception. You have writing some uh, users in the database, but you don't know if it was 1, 2, 3, or 20. You, the only thing that you can do is just make transactions and try to, to avoid that problem, not because uh, of the problem, just because to not let it consistent, just because we are using exceptions. And we have an unchecked exceptions, that this is exceptions that you are not telling in the signature of the method that it could throw. So if you are using a library, you never know if that library could throw or not an exception. And it could be very, very complicated because we cannot put try catch for every single call. So I think that's a problem. How we can do it in Kotlin? Uh, I think we know uh, what an enemy in Java is. Is something like this, no? We can create errors there, or even we can go a little bit further and we can create a, a more specific uh, enum just to get some, some information, right? In Kotlin, we have something similar that is called sealed class, and it's like a restricted hierarchy. Mm, that uh, I, I think, how many of you know either object? OK, so I'm going, to, I'm going to explain it now. OK, we can say that select class is an enum with vitamins, right? Because you can create a several instances per, uh, per class. They can carry a state. For example, here, this is an, an example of select class. We can have in a restricted hierarchy not found network error or file system error. Everyone could have a different values, different properties, and different params. So that's very, very nice because there are different uh, errors. And they, she say, OK, we need to talk because it's going to get in a little bit harder, this. We are going to talk about either. The either uh, is something that Jorge explained in the, in the previous uh, talk. And you can have two values. You can have the left value or the right value. In some languages, it's called result. In Swift, for, for example, or in other libraries, uh, it could be used to communicate error and success. The left, it, could, it should be, well, it, 
used to be the error and the right, the success. It's similar to option. Option is like an either in one side it could have nothing or the success, right? Or even the try. Try is exactly the same than either, but in the left part we always have an exception. So for example, our, this is how we can code in Kotlin and, and either. Just put it not to, to follow it, just to see that it's very, very simple. For example, let's back to the to the enums. We are going to create the repository error, not internet, and an authority an authorized. Okay. So we are going to to create here to call a repository that could return an either with in the left part it could have that error, that select class error, and in the right part we can have the normal movie, right? So Result maybe this is fault, a fault, fault is a method from either that receives two functions. In the, fir the first function, it will be uh, call it when there is an error, and the second one when there is a success. So it's a very nice way to, to handle the, the errors. It will, uh, we don't need to have a try catch, and I think it's a, it's a little bit better. And also, we can take profit of the pattern matching. The pattern matching is like in Kotlin, if we have a select class and we have a when, and the when is uh, equals, is the function is equals to, to the when, it's going to be eustastic. I think, I don't know if that the word, but okay, it's going to try, it's going to say that it's an error if you are not handling all the possible values of the when, right? So that's a very, very nice idea to work with because if we add a new repository error, it's not going to tell in runtime, it's going to tell in a compile time that it's not, we are not handling all the possible errors. So that's very, very nice. And you say, okay, tell me more. You are, you are getting me very, very fascinated with that. So, and there is nothing more romantic than Ryan Codlin just playing a piano, but one thing that is how we use use cases in, in Codlin. This, is, this could be the normal use case that we have in Java. Has the params and also one, only one method. And normally the method just, is just a, a facade, facade for repository method, right? This is a, one method on, with only one line. So in Kotlin, the functions are the first citizen's element, so we can have it without any class that wrap it, the, the method. So we can create a lot of, in, in one file, a lot of use cases a little bit easier, I think, in, than the, the Java. We don't need to all that boilerplate play that we need to do in, in Java. At that time, Harrison Ford knows that he has no possibilities with Jacqueline, and also she, he started to think that he never was in love with her. So he all, uh, only was in love with one person so long, ago, so long ago, and he said, okay, I'm going to fight for that person. I was in love with he, her, so I'm going to, to fight for her. So he stood up and said, okay, I'm going to go with the only person that always supported me, and it was the Princess Leia. Okay, now at that moment, it's, uh, it's Ryan Kotlin, very, very nice, and he says, okay, we are going to talk about how we execute the use cases that we, we saw it before. So for example, we can have a, some, something like a, a Fluent API or something like that, that is wrapping all the use cases, right? For example, in this case, it has the task that we have, uh, we have to execute, we can add it some delay, we can add in UI uh, param that is going to be a math uh, function. It's going to handle the error or the success function. But the most important thing is when we call run, we pass one uh, use case executor. That executor, for example, could be with coroutines in background. So if we call it like shop cancellation token, launch, blah, 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 we can run it, the use case, in background. But also we can change the implementation and we can create another instance of that executor and we can put it in run blocking. So this 
uh, this time is not going to uh, block uh, running background, I mean, is going to block the, the thread. So with the, uh, just changing the use case executor that we are going to, to pass it, we can run it on background or we can block the, the, the thread. And it could be very, very nice for testing because in production, it's very interesting to me to run it in background and in testing, to me, it's very interesting to uh, hold it there until I have the assault, right? So it's going to get him better and better and better. And she said, yes, a lot. What is happening here? Yes, he is proposing her. I know that this is doesn't Ryan Codling. This is not Ryan Codling, but I always uh, mix them. So to me, are the same people. So I'm going to put it because I think for you also it's the same people, right? And just to finish the, the talk, I'm going to say that she says yes, because there is only one happiness in life, to love and to be loved. Thank you very much. <laughs> just before, before the questions, I just want to, to put in some the best uh, quotes about the, the most famous movies. You map, I map, the Mock Dawson and Titanic. Or love means never have to search for a good blame. Love gives story. Or thanks for the adventure and go to have a new one. And refactor to it, the map movie. Now, yes, if you have any questions, I think the, there is a, a link that you can also just uh, uh, put some questions I think the, the organization created. So that's it. If someone has a, a question, I'm sorry for my English. No? No one? Okay, okay. Let's, let's go you. to coffee. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Nicolas.